Hello and welcome back to Oasis Top Tips. Did you know that Oasis Primer has customizable shortcut keys that can help you speed up your workflow? Today I'm going to show you how to use these. Today I'm going to show you the shortcut commands within Primer. You can access these in two ways. First, go to Options and select Shortcuts. Here you can see all the shortcuts that are pre-assigned for you. You can also assign your own with their blank values or you can override them by clicking on the drop down arrows and you can see all the options available to you including macros, javascript or I can just clear this one here. You can also save these to a preference file or reload them if you say you had another session open and you wanted to bring over those shortcuts into the current session or you can restore to defaults. Some of these I've already assigned myself and I can restore them if I click reload preferences. But I'll just go to defaults for now because that's what you'll be presented with. I'm now going to go through briefly all of the options available to you. You can see that F1 to 12 are currently blank and these are often useful for assigning your own commands. So things like macros or JavaScripts that you want to use in your workflow. Then we have A and I'll start here and explain all these options. Now that this is capital, so I've got the caps lock key on my keyboard. I could also access this using shift if I was not in caps locks. So to demonstrate this, I'll just move the car out of the way, press A, and it's auto-centered the car or auto-scaled, analogous to pressing AC down here. Now, moving on, B is the blanking options. If I move this across, you can see that that would be the same as clicking blanking here, and you can control what blanking you're doing. C is a quick pick close polygon. For this, I need to be in a quick pick polygon option. So up the top here, I can toggle until I see a pentagon appear. And now I can click around defining a polygon. And if I want to close it now, I can click on C, closes the polygon, and it's performed the blank operation on that polygon I defined. D is a drag a cut plane. So say I had a cut plane defined, I could click D and I could drag it around. You can see it's moving. You can see the options here, the X chord set and things like that. And what I can do is if I turned it on and then maybe had a normal display, you can see the cut plane and I can move it through the car just like so. So with a shift and middle mouse, I'm moving it across the side so you can see it and middle button. So let's turn it off for now. So turn off the um, cut section and press A to auto center the car. Great. Next, we have Entities menu. Now, you can also access this by going to Display Entities, but I find just pressing the E button is a lot more convenient. You can change things like the visibility of beams and shells and parts. So say I just turned off some shells, for example, then you'll see that only the non-shell elements are displayed. OK. So I'm just going to turn this back on and update. F. This is a, a shaded contour plot. So if I press F, currently it's going to show the time step of each of these components. And this is very similar to pressing CT, but if you notice, when I press CT, it won't look shaded. So if you want to have the lighting attributes involved, then you press F and you can see a bit more of the texture and shading involved. Nothing's assigned to G, but I could change that if I wanted to with the drop down options. H is hidden line plot. This is the same as pressing HI down here. So I could press H and it changes to the hidden line plot. I is iconize and deiconize. This is useful if you've got lots of panes open. So if I press E again, that opens up the entities pane. If I press I, that's going to minimize them. And you can see I can move them around or do whatever I like with them. And then I again, and they open up back where they were. So they have memory of where they used to be. Are. J is a way of finding attached. So if I press J, what you'll see is the things that I originally blanked are now being joined. That's the way I think of it. So it's things that are joined to what's currently visible. And you can keep pressing this recursively until everything is visible. But note this can take a long time for some uh, big models with lots of um, complicated connections like contacts and other things. K is a reset item attributes. So attributes are things like colors and um, transparency, for example. Um, so I'm actually just going to press S to turn it to shaded view. So I've skipped a bit. So shaded view. And then what I'm going to do 
is shift K, lowercase k, gets rid of those nodal rigid bodies and things, so it's a bit cleaner. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, define a polygon. So um, I'm going to go to my quick pick options. So first I'll get out of um, this dragging option. So close this down and you can see my quick pick options available. I can show you how to do this another way shortly. So now I have my poly options, click, 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 and that's blank. If I middle mouse button, restores it. And what I actually want to do is I want to right click this time so I can choose the option I want. And here, oh, I accidentally missed it. So I close the polygon and now I could do something like, let's make it all white. And then pressing K would restore those attributes just then. L is line mode. So this is just like the same as pressing LI down here. M is the measure tool. So here you can click and measure around and you can see the distance and length. N is a cut plane node pick. So you can pick a node and then suddenly it defines a cut plane at that node. You can turn it off and on, but it's a very short cut way of doing it. So if you didn't want to um, use the dragging option, or if you wanted to combine the two, you could go N and then you could click and then you could press D and you could actually drag it from them. Just a way of showing you how to do it. So let's turn that off and close that for now. And it closed the blanking options as well. Great. Okay, um, now we have O and this is display options menu. So this opens up down here. And this is um, changing things like how shells are displayed. So you could change them to be smooth and that would give them some true thickness, for example. So click S and we've just got it back there. Now we can see the shells have some thickness displayed on them. So I use that quite often to change the options. You can change the colors of the overlay, for example. P. This is to toggle the predictive picking. So up here is PP and if you notice, when I have my cursor over the car in a normal mode, so let's go to um, a selection mode with a circle or maybe the square, not in polygon mode, note. Then what we have is we can see these highlights around there. And if I press P, then what's gonna happen is they don't appear, but I can still click and do options, but it doesn't have that um, white outline. Some people like that, some people don't. It depends what you're doing really. So you can just toggle it on off and on easily. You can see on, off, on, off. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that off for now. And then Q is quick pick selection mode. So here we can press Q and we can go. So I did click this previously, but you can actually toggle through them quite easily. So this is a circle, this is a square pick, and then we can go for the polygon. Right, now I'm actually going to show you the next one, which is R. And this is actually removing points. So I can click R, R, and they've removed the points that I've clicked. R, 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 removed the points from my selection. S is a shaded plot. I've already shown you that, but that's the same as S shaded here. Tidy all. Now, if I press T, it actually tidies and stacks up all of the open windows in the top corner. I can then press I and bring them back out again. But that's a really nice thing if you've moved your windows around. So say you've got the side here and you shrunk that down. You can press T and it makes it neat again. So tidy is a good command to remember. U, so this is undo last action. So say what I do is I click around and I blank some stuff and I blank some other stuff and I'll press C to close that polygon. Then if I press U, it unblanks the first and undoes the first option. And then U again undoes the second. So that's undo last. And that's quite useful. So I'm gonna just toggle to a selection mode, maybe circle mode. And then um, that does the same thing as clicking the middle mouse button. So U, that's capital U note. Then V is viewing menu. So you can access this with your views down here or clicking V, so I'll just close that and show you clicking V does the same thing. And then W would open up your right menu and this shows your options for writing images. Great, then we have these options here, one to eight. And this corresponds to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the different preset viewing options. 
So I'll just minimize those so you can see if I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and if I set auto centered first, then it would look a bit neater. I'll just click T to tidy up I and then again. So you can actually see how you can get quite efficient working with this and doing lots of commands without really having to click so much. So that just speeds up your workflow, I find. Okay, now a point of note, you might have noticed that some of these are red. And the reason for that is because they have a different option for the lowercase as to the uppercase. All of the rest are the same, which is nice, but some of them have a different option for the lowercase commands. So I'm just going to quickly show you those. You can access them either by using the shift button when you're in caps lock or just turning caps locks off and then you're into that. So the first one is the C command and that's close all. So it's close polygon, capital C, lowercase c is close all. So click C and everything's closed. All of those things are opened. That can be really nice. So say I open up some discrete stuff and then I open up, I don't know, some loads, bodies, these all open here. And then I'm going to open up the entities menu. And then I'm going to open up the shortcuts. If I click press C, close everything, including all these options here. Now you have to be careful when you close all because say you had done something like a translation and you click on, let's just translate the whole model. Click on the model and translate it uh, in the Z, let's say Z by 10 meters, apply. Then it's hard to see because obviously it's relative itself. Then if I close all, so if I just measure first of all, see that's at um, Z of 15. 7. If I close all, then what's actually going to happen is the car is going to move down again. So now we're only at 5 point something. So just note that if you haven't clicked um, accept on one of these options on say the translator or whatever, then those are actually going to be reverted. So just a word of caution when you're closing all, but it can be really handy. Next we've got reset entity visibility. And I actually did that one earlier for you. So if I press J, then you're going to see that all of the things attached. So this is going to really show you things like nodal rigid bodies and stuff. Then pressing K, this lowercase K, gets rid of those. So it just restores the entity options. It's the same thing as actually if I had turned off shells and I don't know, turned off discrete update. Then if I press K, then those are going to restore themselves. Here we have a toggle current prediction view. And this is if we are in the quick pick options, we can click on P and it will toggle the prediction view. Note that if you've got all blank, then it doesn't do anything. So that's if you did capital P, um, but capital P and then P it toggles the prediction view of the current options. Quick pick toggle. So this is actually useful. Say if we had a option open, like if I press, if I move this across, you can see we have the measure option open. If I press I and then T, it will just tidy up those panes. And then what I'm going to do is if I press Q, it now goes into the measure quick pick options. See here, you could also achieve um, the option of Q by clicking on the model pane. So if I click model, it brings back the quick pick options, but um, I would then have to click back on measure to get back in. So Q just get, allows you to say you blank and then you press Q again and you're back into measure. Um, and it just makes it more efficient working like that. Okay, so now I'm going to press I to bring it back the um, program shortcuts again. And we've got one more to look at. Um, oh, two more. We have reverse or blanking. So this is uh, useful if you say you've blanked some stuff. So let's just press T to minimize that. And we've blanked some stuff. I'll press R to reverse. You can see that some stuff's blanked and then R to reverse again and that's back where we were. And then the last one is U and that's unblank all. It doesn't work with uppercase U, that's undo, like a middle mouse, but that is unblank all. So that's a quick tour of some of the um, shortcuts available to you. Um, there are a couple more here. These are fairly self-explanatory. Um, I'd really encourage you to try them out yourself, customize them, do whatever you want. Um, and it can be really powerful and massively improve your workflow. So I hope you found this useful and you can incorporate some of these top tips into your workflow.